still gonna rip. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, who starts? I'll have you start since you're gonna rip on it. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to another Telltale video. This video we are going to discuss pleasantly <laughs> Arthur C. Clarke's final Odyssey novel, 3001, Od The Final Odyssey. Mm -hmm. What a brilliant name for a book. The Final Odyssey, <laughs> which is odd because it's left kind of open-ended. Like, you, it could continue the series if they wanted to. Yeah, well, he's dead, so yeah. he's not going to continue it. But, you know, at the time, could have been continued yeah, he was still a little alive. further was, if they wanted to. What was it, 1989 this came out? Something like that. I forget I can't exactly. I think it was 1989. Long time ago. Anyway. You're better with dates than I am, so I'll just believe you. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's more than 20 years ago that this book came out. Mm -hmm. And so he was alive for a long time after that. And he could have written another, but he never did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, any continuation would have to be somebody else mm -hmm. writing it. And that's, you know. And maybe starting to extend outside of the jupiter system mm. and some other things and doing some other stuff and maybe finding new planets that'd be great mm -hmm. yeah. so okay right off the bat we have to war warn spoilers galore. lots of spoilers in this we one. can't even talk about the first chapter of this book without spoiling things for you if, if you're because a, it has a, a twist fan. right away yeah so synopsis you want to take that so dave pool dave Frank. Frank. Gosh, I always keep wanting to say Dave because Dave is like always Dave, brought up. Dave Bowman. Is Dave Bowman the, is always brought up. Off in the ether somewhere. Yes, <laughs> off as an energy being. Anyway, so um, Frank Poole is still alive. They found him frozen in space, and because it is three thousand one, they can like cryogenically basically bring him back to life. So they do, <laughs> and boy, is he having a rough time. Everything's so new and modern, and he's, like, basically a living antique, and he's having a hard time with culture shock and adjusting and finding that everything he knows and believes is obsolete. And it's just been a shit show for the poor guy. <laughs> but at least he knows one thing. That he knows Dave. And once he figures out and is told about all the things that have taken place in the previous books, he wants to contact Dave. Mm -hmm. And so he proceeds to try and contact Dave after meeting lots of weird characters, uh, lots of an interesting world, having his hits and misses. At one point, he gets made fun of for being circumcised. Because that's a genital mutilation by this point. So, like, women yeah. were, some women were fine with it and some were afraid to sleep with him because he was mutilated. So, that was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so he tries to make contact uh, after going back to the Jovian system with uh, Dave by approaching Europa. Yeah, he lands on Europa. He lands on Europa. Which gets, you're not supposed to do. Yeah, which you're still not supposed to do. People are afraid <laughs> to let him do it. But the fact that. It, they say that in the book that people have tried and then be, been redirected by some unknown force or have been prevented in some manner from landing on the surface. He is allowed but, to hey, land. Hey, this is Frank Poole. Yeah, so. this is Frank and he's... He's cooler than the rest of he's us. He's basically immortal. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the new Jesus or something. He's resurrected, except more impressive because he's resurrected after several thousand years, hundred years, thousand years, a century at least. Yeah, thousand something years. Something like that. 2001 to 3,000. Yep, years. that's true. A thousand, thousand years, years later. So he, yeah, he gets down there and he contacts Dave and basically a lot of weird shit happens. <laughs> he talks to Dave, has contact, sees the beings of Europa, which we kind of had hint of in previous books that they were developing in this manner. And we had seen them before, so but this was the first time another human human had actually seen them and interacted with them, but not really by much. So there's that. And then there's basically a warning from Dave saying, my superiors, I think, are planning something and it might be to your the he detriment of humanity. So... 
go home and figure out a way to stop this. <laughs> Which is, like, no pressure but pressure from man from the other and Hal from the other. Mm-hmm. So then he has to go back and formulate a committee, which gives him a sense of purpose, which he didn't have before. And he has to go, f- like, bring together this committee and figure out where and how they're going to deal with this issue. So they come up with this plan that because the monolith is technically a computer, why can't we just release a super massive bad virus to it? And have it malfunction so it can't get the message back on how humans are doing so that they can't keep tabs on them anymore and therefore don't try to destroy them or harm them in any manner, Mm -hmm. which succeeds. But at the expense of Dave and Hal potentially being corrupt files sitting on a USB of some kind or CD-ROM. It goes to show how old this is. A (laughs) CD-ROM is the most modern thing in 3001. And then it goes back into the vault of both real, man-made, uh, mutated, and computer viruses. Mm-hmm. Which is on the moon. Mm-hmm. The end. Yeah. That's the whole story. It is. With some details sprinkled in there that we didn't mention. But for the most part, okay. that's the whole premise. So before I get started, yeah. what did you think of it? Uh, it was a little lack- lackluster for me. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It gave me enough closure. I liked it well enough, but it's not top tail material for sure. Okay. It's, there were some things that I felt like they could have done better or more with. Mm-hmm. I felt like the New World Order was kind of a cop out. I'm like, you could have had a much more interesting way of dealing with how society is dealt with. I didn't appreciate how they talk about how their prison system is done, which is basically you just take away people's free will and make them robots. Because everybody's got a brain chip. Which mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so it's like no different really than what we're doing now. Is making them less than people. <laughs> so I felt like they didn't really... The future didn't really solve a lot of problems. They just... I don't know. It was like making prison people dry drunks. So that bothered me a lot. But other than that, I mean, it gave you closure to... To the stories, I felt well enough. It was interesting Mm -hmm. enough that it compelled me. I had a lot of things that I could overlook. But for the most part, like, I felt like it was an enjoyable one. It brought up a lot of interesting philosophical discussions, especially the ones about religion that were towards the end. I thought those were really interesting. Um, I thought the concept of towers coming off Earth to deal with some of the population issues and going into the stratosphere and, like, further out in space was interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Who has the frickin' money for that? Exactly. None of the country. Yeah, none of the countries. Like, there was a lot of plausible deniability. Elon Musk. Yeah. There was <laughs> He's a, actually talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> but there's, like, a lot of plausible deniability that you really have to lean on through this story, which was just making it a stretch. Yeah. So I kind of had to just all right, whatever, and move through it. And if you can be an all right, whatever person and just move right through it, that's fine. Like, it's actually quite an enjoyable story. But if you're a person who's a deep thinker, there's a lot of things to pick apart. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Go for it. I'm going to start. Destroy it. With a general overall, do you remember the last movie in the Twilight series where... Everything you were led to believe through the whole fantasy, all of a sudden... Changes. Oh, sorry. It was all not real. It's a lie. 3001. Yes. Everything. Every brilliant idea that came from 2001, 2010, into 2061, all of a sudden... Oh, it's all just a computer simulation. What the... No. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty much. No. Um, You know, 2001 was a work of art. Mm -hmm. Talking about the, you know, it it was basically a a metaphor for the future of of evolution and mankind. And talking about, you know, and and that's the whole thing. All these monoliths are machines. Well, we know that. Yeah, no doubt. Somebody is leaving them behind. But they were supposed to be, like, higher level, not just another fucking computer that Hal and Dave could just bring a computer virus to and be like, bye. And this book does absolutely nothing to answer the question of where the hell are the aliens that built this machine? Yeah. And why are they... The ones that... Another thing I will also point out is that, like, so... 
the last transmission was a thousand years prior and took about a thousand years to get to whoever made this monolith. Yeah. Which so they were not in a good They have place. stargates. Yeah. <laughs> Why did it take a thousand years? Exactly. They have instantaneous travel all over the universe, but they have to communicate by radio at light speed? What the hell? I know. And so, like... While these monoliths, I mean, like, the last ping they had was when the last monolith was found on Jupiter. And Earth was not going through an easy time then. So their last, their last thing is, like, totally obsolete now. Humanity was in a shit show mm -hmm. on Earth mm -hmm. and dealing with, you know, who sent up that satellite and blah, 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 and what the fuck? And why are the humans landing on Europa when we said no and fuck this shit and all that, whatever. And so now, a thousand years later, they have done their best to do the best to make their society a utopia, essentially. As close to it as they can, being not perfect humans. So, like, they're getting obsolete. Their last radio signal was obsolete information, and now they're just getting a report back saying that maybe humans need to be ter a terminated experiment? Mm-hmm. But everything we were led to believe mm -hmm. in 2001, 2010, 2061... All of a sudden, the monoliths are just mindless com are just these computers operating on their own that make the decision to just destroy all of us, and they make the decision to terminate. You know, the experiment on Europa they weren't developing as quickly any as they like. No, yeah. they weren't. They weren't going to develop any intelligence. So oh, the yeah, monoliths that's right. decide to just pull the plug on that whole experiment and destroy them too. Mm -hmm. They went to, I mean, they converted a whole planet into a damn star, and then they're just going to walk away and pull the plug? And they're doing this based off computer logic. The aliens are not stepping in and saying, hey, wait a minute, we paid for this. They're we just wanna... <laughs> believing these computers that they left well, they're behind not even, they're apparently millions not even of years ago. Anymore. Even though Dave Bowman met them in 2001, yeah. they're apparently not even existent anymore. Where you know where'd they go? What yeah. happened? We they don't have any outside answers outside of the understand of metaphysics. Our understanding of metaphysics. Is we get all what these, I grasp at. all I'm these like, bull crap explanations that pull the plug on everything that was talked about in in the three previous novels. Oh, sorry, it's all just computer simulation, and the aliens are just never even discussed. You know, the conversation on religion was kind of interesting, but that lasted one chapter. Yeah, and it, there wasn't a lot of it. And um, there wasn't a lot of philosophical debate either. No. It was more of let me just spew a bunch of philosophical ideas at you with very little response or, like, actual dialogue. And structurally, now, 2061 was largely just a travelogue around the solar system and then a little bit about Europa. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like Clark's early works were, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of other science fiction authors did that kind of thing back in the 40s and 50s, and it was kind of quaint to read for that book. But with this one, I wanted some final answers, a final odyssey. Mm -hmm. Didn't get it. Half the book is just another gosh wow tour of 3000 of the world of 3001 where yeah. they have all these technological mar marvels. And yeah, it sounded all cool, but like she was saying... Who paid for this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, how you know we how don't did have Africa all these... get their own tower when they're dealing with some of the lar well, I mean, they have a really large population of extremely impoverished. How did they solve that problem? That's what I want to know. Well, the how did they develop all the that stuff? The location of such towers would be based on stable points on the Earth relative to the stable points in orbit. Mm -hmm. And one of those would be in North Africa. Mm -hmm. um, but still, high rate of poverty. Like, where's yeah. that money coming from? It, Corruption? Well, even if all the other nations pitched in to do it, mm -hmm. we don't have the money or resources to go even a, a tenth of the way towards something like is built in this novel. How is that happening? Where's that goodwill? coming from? Did they have such a such a utopia that everything's yeah. just done out of it's goodwill? kind of the Star Trek dilemma. They have this great society, but who's paying for it, especially yeah. if they don't have money? Yeah, they really have. <laughs> money has basically been made obsolete, but it's like... Yeah, so like... It's just materialized out of thin air in the I transporters. Know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's it's it wasn't as good as some of the others because the concepts were Clark not as wrote some brilliant, brilliant novels. Rendezvous with Rama, 2001, 
um, childhoods and among uh, Fountains of Paradise, where he first introduced the elevator to space concept. Brilliant novels, great novels. Mm -hmm. But then for the final Odyssey, he writes this total piece of crap yeah. that... It just, answers nothing, solves nothing, tells you nothing, just pulls the rug out of the whole series. This book never should have been written. Anybody with intelligence just, at the publishers should have said, go back and write us a story that we all want. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this one feels like he was just ready to be done. And so he was just looking yeah, for it, it was out like of that he was series. Just trashing the whole series. Yeah, like he was just <laughs> looking to move on from it and have it stop being his, his baby and move into other work and other things. But like... This ends up being one of his most popular series when you think about it. Well, because of 2001. Because of the film, yeah. I mean, the, the movie is brilliant. It's mm -hmm. a work of art. And that's what probably draws most people in. And because they, the script and the book were written simultaneously for that, mm -hmm. maybe it's because Kubrick wasn't involved in this one. I don't know. Well, 2010 was really good, too. Yeah, that was still pretty good. You know, 2010 was more accessible for people, but it still it carried the story forward and, and brought a lot of new things to it. It was really good. Mm -hmm. So I guess my advice is read 2001, read 2010, stop there. <laughs> don't go on. 2064, 2061 you're feeling... 2061 was okay. Eh, it's 2061, yeah. Why did I say 2064? It was, it was fun for those of us that love classic science fiction, but it, it really didn't live up to no. 2001 or 2010. And then this thing, like I say, was if you love Buster, how yeah. Twilight series ended, then you'll love 3001 because this or is exactly that. Or if you exactly can just that. glaze over it and not overthink <laughs> it. You have to be a person who doesn't overthink the literature in order to enjoy it, I think. Which I found myself doing where it's like, you know what? I need to stop just overthinking this and being super critical right now. And just get through the story. Which it is a fast read. And if you want to know the whole series of 2001 A Space Odyssey and all the details, go for it. Like, there are people who would probably enjoy this because the futurism is very interesting. Mm. It is. But... Yeah, it was a cool future. Impossible, but cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, people use things as escapism, not necessarily well, as... true. Uh, what, to sit and pick it apart like got. we have, but... We also are pricking it apart because there was a lot in the previous ones that was scientifically accurate. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. Not really. Nothing scientifically accurate about this one. Just bringing in the whole idea of computer avatars. That was something that he couldn't have done in 1969 or 1980. Yeah. And kind of like there was a hint at like a World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. So kind of is heading in that direction too but it wasn't called that it was basically a hive mind yeah essentially everybody had a computer chip in their brain instead of a phone and just could telepathically send each other emails and all this other crazy stuff which is also kind of like scary when you think about it because that's also how they like hacked people who were like criminals brains and took away their free will and made them robots instead of having like a prison system which they did have a prison system it just wasn't as densely populated but instead of it, lower level criminals could just do their service by having their free will taken away for a period of time. In our sentence. society, we call that management. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's all they're doing. It's like if someone was a dry drunk. Yeah, you can quit drinking and never drink again. But that doesn't mean you've you stopped being an alcoholic because if nope. you pick it up again, you're still going to be an alcoholic. You know, like that's all they're doing. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's really weird. And also, like, it was weird because the prisoners don't have a recollection of the time they served. Right. So how have they, you know, they incurred a debt to society and how do they know they've paid it? Like They don't. Yeah, but they, they don't. they have no memory of their former crime life, so they're not going to commit crimes. So they basically, they? like... I guess. I don't know, but it's just weird. It's H. really weird. H.G. Wells would say it's human nature. If you don't have laws to control us, we're <clears> going <throat> to commit crimes. Yeah. Well, like, and it made me think, there was a real-life situation where I watched a documentary out. This girl broke up with her boyfriend and was texting and driving while she broke up with her boyfriend and hinted very heavily that she was going to commit suicide while she was driving. 
She swerved to, into the other lane and killed three people in another van. Woke up with amnesia and has no recollection of the whole thing. And the whole court case was about whether or not she actually the, committed the crime if she didn't have memory of it. And it's like, um, yeah, she did. Three people are dead. Or was it mm -hmm. two people? I said, they, someone's dead. People died. Like, yes, just because she doesn't remember it doesn't mean she wasn't reckless beforehand. And they're like, there's not enough evidence. I'm like, her text messages were evidence enough to say that she was under enough duress that she could have done it. It was basically an admission. But yeah, I, I kind of thought of that when I was thinking of the way they dealt with this prison system. We it's need like to read don't... Clockwork Orange and take that conversation a lot farther. I know, <laughs> I know. I was just... Prison systems in the United States are privatized. They're not actually funded by the government, so therefore your taxes don't go towards it. So that was my other question. How are these, like, how is this re rehabilitation program paid for? Like, especially under this thing. Like, is it tax money that we're paying to keep these people alive during this period of time when they're robots? Wouldn't cost or much to just put a chip in them. Yeah, but, like, you still have to program them to remember to eat and sleep and the things the body needs, like... Well, you would have nanobots that would just affect the things that you want to change and all the, all the basic functions would keep going. Okay. I don't know. Because they're all separate parts yeah. of the brain. Anyway, that's, that's United States prison is system is corrupt! Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it's just... It's really interesting. There's a lot of detail things in there that, like... But again, I had to just stop overthinking it and get through it. And if I didn't overthink it, it would have been very, very much enjoyable. I liked it mm -hmm. well enough when I didn't sit there overthinking it. Yeah, I did. I was OK until today. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking of, I'm in a very bad mood today and I'm thinking about this book and I'm thinking, why do I like this? I don't yeah. like it. I don't really like anything about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's okay. Sometimes you need to have, like, a mood switch to really realize, like, no, I was thinking of this through rose-colored glasses. I think it's mm. very easy for our moods to affect how we feel about literature. Like, there's a lot yeah. of literature that was really hard for me to go back and read because I had been forced to read it in school. Mm -hmm. And because it was assigned to then, it was, like, ugh, drudgery. Mm -hmm. But now that I've read it for pleasure, it's like, oh... I actually liked it or oh that was a piece of shit why did they make us read that in school fuck that but yeah there there is a problem with authors who have written some great stuff that then they get to a point where they can write anything and it'll sell big mm -hmm. and a lot of people will like it because it's by that author you know I went into this thinking it was going to be one of my very favorite books because it's Arthur C. Clarke, and I, I love so many of what he wrote in the past. But to, you know, if you, if you sit down and put all that aside and just be honest with yourself, a lot of times you're going to find that, no, it wasn't a good book. It really wasn't. You know, mm -hmm. don't get hooked into the hype. Don't get hooked into the fame of the author. Don't get hooked into everybody says it's so great. Mm -hmm. Be honest with yourself about it. And you're going to find that, no, it really wasn't a good book. Yeah. It could have been so much better. I could have written a better Final Odyssey. <laughs> because I, I got my ideas of where this should have gone, you know, mm -hmm. with the aliens and, and evolution and all Great. that kind of stuff. And, and Do it. Just didn't. <laughs> Do it. Well, I don't have the rights to. Shh. <laughs> fan fiction. Fan fic. <laughs> I mean, people make millions off fan fics. <laughs> It well, happens. I wouldn't do it for the money. I would do it just to do it right, to right a wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Fix it. Um, Gotta fix it. Yeah. I do want to say, though, just because we're ripping on this, it is because we are critical readers. And we encourage people who have a mind to have be critical readers. Yeah, I'm not even so. drunk yet. It's yeah. still full. <laughs> we want to make sure that people actually enjoy what they're reading. So if you are a critical reader, this is not a book for you. If you are a non-critical reader and you just want a fun, cool, futuristic setting story, this is fine. But I'm still going to be the evil one. If you have half a brain, you won't like this. <laughs> I'm going to say, playing devil's advocate, 
you can like whatever you want. Yeah. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a huge connoisseur. I mean, there's plenty of books out there that people really enjoy that have been top sellers that I didn't mm-hmm. enjoy. But yeah. that doesn't mean that, like, not every opinion like is Twilight. relevant. You know? Yeah. Like Twilight. <laughs> like The Hunger Games. I did not enjoy The Hunger Games. No. It was I've too simple for it. me. Yeah. It was too simple for me. It was okay. too cut and dry and simple and way too close to several animes I had seen. So I was like, oh, okay. Whatever. But if you are not a critical reader, I'm sure this is fine. You would probably enjoy it just as much as any of the other books. The setting is actually kind of cool. Like, it is an interesting concept, at least. Yeah. The hows and whys are frustrating, but, I mean, you might well like it well enough. I say give everything a chance, but if you're a critical reader, you're not going to like this one up front. Yeah, Straight there's up. a lot of bad science in here, too. Yeah, which is frustrating, because all the other ones were so good. There was yeah, so and Arthur good. C. Clarke knew better. Yeah, was, seriously. You know, he was a out. scientist. I want to know how much of this book was just pressure from publishers to finish it. Could be. I mean, it was written quite a while after. And he the, just wanted to shut them up, so he made a piece of shit just to make them shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just to teach them a lesson. Yeah. Sometimes I think that happens a lot in in literary circles. It's like, I'll do this just to shut you up and get you the fuck off my back. And it's going to be a piece of shit. But here you go. Fuck you. Well, or maybe, you know... You really only need to read 2001. It's not an easy read, especially if you don't read it and you watch the movie instead. It's not easy. you got to really think deep. But it's all right there. Yeah. You don't need any of the other books. Mm-hmm. It is so, a good standalone. Yeah, by this point, by the time 3001 was written, it's beating a dead horse. Mm-hmm. For sure. And maybe that's why he made it so bad. So that I did they would also stop really bothering like him. <laughs> yeah, I did also really like 2010, though. I did like the character. I liked it too. I really mm-hmm. did. But I, at the time it came out, I thought, why are they continuing it? Everything was said in 2001. Mm-hmm. 2061 just it. seemed like it was a little fanfare, and then this one mm-hmm. was just whatever. Yeah. So maybe there's no such thing as anything being better than a trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm finding that even in myself. Maybe we should make that a topic video sometime is like... Well, most when people are you have remarked on that, course? that, you know, the fir- first or second book or both will be really good. But then after that, there's this it's downhill just like, run. Uh, more of the same, mm-hmm. same story, different names. I'm kind of kind of finding that with I'm reading A Court of Wings and Ruin right now. It's as good as the others, but nothing's it's like better and nothing's worse. Rinse, repeat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know. But that's what sells. People like consistency <laughs> yeah. because it's well, comfortable. I don't. I, I like don't either. Different. People, I want to take it in a really. And I'm only 150 pages in, so mm-hmm. maybe it does go. Yeah, you don't but know. So far, it's just like reading the other two books. Except this time, it's hot pink. You, well, that's another minus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pink. <laughs> anyway. But yeah. No. So now that we've destroyed these 3,001, tell us what you thought. Fight us. Please fight us. I would love for us to have a tiny controversy on YouTube. Oh, it's a good thing this isn't going up right away tonight, people commenting on it, because I'm in no mood to take anybody's shit. I know. You would destroy (laughs) them. Or just turn off comments. Is that even an option? Can you do that? Oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, turn off comments. (laughs) But otherwise, yeah, join us again. For our next review, let's see if we have something we like a little bit more. Oh, the others, I think I'll have good things to say about. That's good. That's good. Yeah, this one I felt like it was... Yeah. I'm an overthinker, though, when I read every time, so that's just me. So like, subscribe. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.